when I'm 85 on my deathbed, I guarantee I'll have a morphine drip, but I'll be smiling because I know that I left it all on the table, man. And I poured my heart, my soul and my energy, not just into other people, but into myself because, you know, you're only as strong as the weakest link and that's you. So once you're strong and you're fulfilled and you're vital, then you can share those gifts with the rest of the world. Welcome to the Spartan Decca series on Spartan Up with Jared Cogswell, Director of Sport and Yancey Culp, Director of Programming. What's up Spartans? Welcome to the DECA series on the Spartan Up podcast. I'm your co-host, Jared Cogswell, along with my brother and director of DECA programming, Yancey Colt. And today, I'll tell you what, guys, we have a guest that can really, really, literally take a punch. He's a strength and conditioning specialist and inventor. He was the U.S. National Taekwondo Champion, Pete Holman. This episode of Spartan Up is brought to you by Gone Rogue High Protein Chips. Visit Amazon or GoneRogueSnacks.com and use the promo code SPARTAN25 to get 25% off. Pete, every time I see you, you are just a blast of, of amazing positive energy. And, you know, it, it's just cool, um, you know, to be on, on this show with you. You've done a lot of things in your career, and I think it's important to share you know, with, with our audience, because you've done so many things, not just on the fitness side of like training people, you're a physical therapist, you know, obviously a strength and conditioning specialist, but also an inventor. And one of the things that, you know, that really rocked the fitness industry a few years back, and I've used it myself, is the, the TRX RIP trainer. And, and I love the story that you shared, at, you know, and how it came about. Um, but man, that piece alone, it's been used by professional athletes like Steph Curry, uh, Lindsey Vaughn. Yep, there it is. There it is, man. And I've used it. I've used it so many times with my clients, you know, and it's like it's this simple piece, but it does so much. And so where, where did the idea for something like that come up? So that was, I was actually training an X Games athlete by the name of Mike Schultz, and he was a snowmobile, a snowcross guy. And he, he, his back was hurting. And he said, man, I got to get ready for X Games. I got two weeks, my back's tweaky. You know, what do I do? And so I trained him a couple of times and I did all the, you know, high to low chop and lift patterns and torsional buttressing and all the stuff you do on a back. And then I thought, how could I replicate the forces that are seen when you take a 40 mile an hour bank turn on a 500 pound sled. And I said, you gotta, you'd have to hold a handle or some kind of lever bar to, to replicate that force. And I literally was laying in my bed, looked up at the closet rod and I said, huh, that would kind of make a cool handle. And I ripped all my clothes off, put an eye bolt in the end, got an old sport cord. And I literally had the first iteration of the tier, what's now called the TRX rip trainer. And I'm out in my garage and I'm like, let me just play around with this thing. And after like 15 minutes, bro, I was sweating. My core was lit up. My hips were all activated. My feet were light because you got to balance with that thing. And I said, I'm on to something here. And that was the start, you know, of, of what is now TRX Rip Training. We're on all seven continents, probably sold 20 million worldwide. And, <laughs> and it's, it's a pretty cool piece, you know, for, especially for rotational control and, and force production. 20 million probably more i mean and i you know what i'm pissed off because it should be way more than that but you know trx randy told me when i started he's like you know the goose that laid the golden eggs is the trx suspension trainer you know that pete and i'm like oh, yeah 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 and but you know he came on so when when you've got a product like the suspension trainer that has all this traction and, and impetus mm -hmm. it's hard to get the redheaded stepchild so you know excuse me into the for, the fray so it was slow launch and, and, and this and that. But now, like you said, I mean, you look Bryce Harper and Steph Curry and Lindsey Vaughn and Jordan Spieth. And I mean, it, just name any top pro athlete, Phil Mickelson. And they're using this thing to understand, you know, rotational forces through their body. Yeah, so awesome. You know, you've, you've done a lot of other things, too, since then. Um, you know, I, I, I know you have uh, the, the glute machine and, you know, it's just... What I love about you, man, is, is, and I love these, these 
characters in in our industry right like you're you're not just somebody that's a practitioner but you're almost like a mad scientist you're always thinking about something how can it be better yeah i mean that's what's funny the first this this is a great story for anybody out there that is in their 30s or 40s and they're like man i've been doing this when can i get something else going on or when's it going to change or when can i actually start making some money this stuff takes time. I spent 20 years doing physical therapy, personal training, strength and conditioning, you know, doing 12 clients a day, waking up at 430 in the morning, you know, being not even having energy for myself to train. And we do that. That's what we do because we love what we do. But at some point, you've got gifts. We all have gifts. And at some point, you want to start exploring your gifts and seeing, hey, what else can I offer? I know a lot of your audience now did all the personal training stuff and now they maybe they own a gym or they own a boutique studio or maybe they have an online digital platform and, and we're starting to branch out because you know that personal training is a young person's game you know i mean i'm i'm competing with 28 year old beautiful ripped you know dudes and gals and it's extremely hard so um you know you got to get outside the box and I, the first time i really got this bug for inventing I was doing physical therapy and every time I went to find a foam roller or a, yo a yoga mat or a stability ball or some bungee cords to do, you know, external rotation and stuff, I could never find it. It was always disorganized and, and, and chaotic. And I said, there should be a rack that holds all this stuff. And that was the first thing I made was called the functional training rack. I licensed it to perform better. This was years ago. And in fact, it's one of the best things I did because on that rack, it, imagine it was just a medicine ball rack, okay? But it kind of angled at a strict angle. And behind it, you could put tilt boards or a BOSU ball. On the side, it had these antennas that came out. You can hang sports cords and resistance cords. Mm -hmm. And then it had these cans and tubes that kind of connected. And you could put foam rollers or yoga mats in there. And it just, it was an all-in-one training rack. And, um, and, you know, it was, but the coolest thing is on one side, it had stability ball holders and what they were is a, it was a, a post a shaft and a hoop right a hoop design this was in 2007 i designed this and you just all you do is lay the stability ball in this hoop and you could have three of them on the side of the rack well i'm not saying i, I invented this design but i'm pretty confident that i did because try to find one of those designs a stability ball hoop holder like that that just now pins to the wall you can get them at any you know perform better power system oh, i've Go seen them and try to find one before 2007, 2008. So that was, but the, pro, the all I did was I tried to solve a problem. You know, mm -hmm. you, you see problems that you get frustrated about in everyday life. And this is what most inventors do. And they're like, gosh, I'm so annoyed that, uh, you know, hair keeps going down the, the drain of my sink. And so they design a little catch to, you know, whatever, grab the, the hair and the crumbs and stuff. It's just fixing a problem. And so that's what sparked it all. Then it was the TRX Rip Trainer. Then it was the Nautilus glute drive, which has been doing incredibly well. It's it's the number one strength piece that Nautilus has. And that's Nautilus. The, the, yeah. The, number the, one the legend of, of fitness manufacturing. Oh yeah. And I got I got another one coming out, you guys. Should I should I share the news with you today? Like you do hey. the first Hey. Hey man, it's Becca. It's okay. Becca okay. Land. I wasn't, ex I wasn't right. expecting this. So so check this out. So I might piss off Escape Fitness because I licensed this product to Escape Fitness, but Ah, that's all right. They'll love it. Um, I like I the guys over at, at Escape. Yeah, they're great. It's a family run business. Uh, you're a little smaller than some, but they have high quality products uh, and they're making a, a nice push into the functional training and, and kind of strength and conditioning uh, world. So I love loaded carries. And I don't know if you guys do that as part of DECA. Maybe I don't know if you have enough room to you know, Deca zone six, brother. Deca zone six. There you go. Okay, so you guys understand the importance of grip strength and core strength and posture and ambulation under load. And so, I all I did is I took a wheelbarrow. I grew up on a farm, a little farm ranch in in Littleton, Colorado. And every weekend, almost every day, I had a wheelbarrow and I was hauling road base and concrete and railroad ties. And I, to this day, you mentioned my core um, demos at the start of this segment. I think to this day, the reason my core is so strong is because I did so many darn loaded carries when I was a teenager and into my early 20s. And so all I did is I took that wheelbarrow design and I said, man, 
could this be sexier? Could, could we load weights on either side so you don't have to bend down and grab heavy dumbbells to do a farmer's carry? And so I came up with this design. I took it to escape and boy, did they tweak it. And I mean, this thing looks like it's a wheelbarrow. Don't get me wrong. It's not rocket science, but it looks like a, a, a Batmobile. It's beautiful. It's aesthetic. It's easy to load. It's easy to unload. And I think it's going to be great for competitive stuff where, you know, you got small group training and you got people lined up at the end for a challenge and you're racing back and forth on the farm or the, on the escape barrel. So that's my latest product. Look for it. We're launching at Equinox and UFC and Lifetime and uh, a couple other gyms here Man. in February. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. And, and again, I, in fact, it's, it's weird that you said something about escape because I, I just commented on, on one of uh, Matt's posts yesterday uh, because man, they do, they do such great work over there. We've talked uh, about the bat suit and the Batmobile <laughs> already. <laughs> Pete, your last, your last segment segues beautiful into a piece that we want to present to the listeners. And this is, this is totally for the listeners. And you nailed, you know, Jer Jared, let's go back to Jared and I, 2000, late 2019, early 2020, when we had the opportunity to create something from dust, we call it, with, with DECA. And it, we were talking about in prep yesterday about, think about Pete and all these products you know and understand the power of, okay, I've got my steady job over here, but I've got this idea. And you can see the vision days, weeks, months, even years down the road and the, and, and the, and the power in the, you know, that, and knowing that that's going to take 5,000 emails, 5,000 phone calls, 5,000 text messages, thousands of meetings. And, and to be able to see through that, the, the murkiness of that and say, you know what though, I've got this idea. And I don't want to be, you know, when it's all done, I'm 89 years old and say, you know what? I, I, I kind of wish I would have acted on that. Talk to the listeners about creating something from dust. It was that little idea when you were lying in bed and you saw, you know, the curtain rod and then 5,000 text message, phone calls and emails and, and face to faces later, the rip trainer is there. And that Jerry and I just went through that with, with Deca or literally over the course of, of a year. It's a beautiful journey if you allow yourself to, to see it that way. Well, absolutely. And it, it's hard, you know, I don't know what the winning formula is. You know, you obviously you want to be creative. Some people have more vision than others, but I think where most people fail, there's a lot of people, I guarantee there's people listening right now. They're like, man, I had that idea. Of, of a loaded carry machine, a wheelbarrow, or I had the idea, like I, uh, many people would come up to me after the rip trainer was launched and they say, Oh, I'm a hockey player. And I used to attach resistance cords, you know, to the end of the hockey stick. And I've been training like that for years, almost, you know, in a braggadocious way. I'm like, that's fantastic. Now get it out to the consumer, get it to on seven continents. It's a total leap of faith and it's a labor of love. And but it's a process. And if you think about life, you think about anything, I don't care if it's an interpersonal relationship or a, you know, a, a spousal relationship, if it's a business that you're trying to launch, if it's a hobby that you're pursuing, you know, I picked up guitar 20 years ago and, and I still suck, but one day I will be like Eric Clapton. I'm not kidding. It's going to happen. It's just a matter of time, but it's the process not to be cliche where you, where you earn what, the, the reward is at the end of the tunnel, right? At the end of the path. So that's where all my knowledge has come from is these processes. And by the way, the first one, the functional training rack, that failed miserably. I probably lost forty, fifty thousand $50,000 on that. But what did I learn about product design and development and manufacturing and shipping and operations and, and sales and marketing. And that's where I started to understand like, okay, I think I can do this better the next time. And then the rip trainer and then the glute, the Nautilus glute drive. And now the escape barrel, I've got another one that's coming out later this year that is kind of like, it's, it's all building up. You know, you learn a lesson, you get punched around and you're like, that sucked. And then you're like, I'm never doing this again. And then you wake up a couple days later, eh, maybe I'll try one more time. And that's just, here's, here's one thing that, all your listeners can relate to because I guarantee everybody listening ha is some kind of athlete or has had some kind of athletic background. It's athleticism, right? It's the athletic training cycle. You train, you compete, you get injured, you rehab, you train, you compete, you get injured, you rehab, and you just keep doing that cycle. 
and people say, aren't you going to retire your, you know, to Tom Brady, bro, you, you just retire. You've done everything. He's like, this is who I am. I train, I compete, I get injured. I, I, I try to get better. I, I'm trying to break the mold. And if you take that same energy and that same mindset of training and put it into business, put it into interpersonal relationships, put it into hobbies. I don't care if you're getting into photography, take that same process of getting knocked around, being frustrated, being overwhelmed and overcoming it. And I'm telling you, it's going to transfer into every aspect of your life. And you're going to be a more actualized human being. Like you said, Nancy, when you're 89, you know, when I'm 89, I'm not sure I'm going to make it to 89, 82, 85, whatever, you know, my joints. Um, when I'm 85 on my deathbed, I guarantee I'll have a morphine drip, but I'll be smiling because I know that I left it all on the table, man. And I poured my heart, my soul and my energy, not just into other people, but into myself because, you know, you're only as strong as the weakest link and that's you. So once you're strong and you're fulfilled and you're vital, then you can share those gifts with the rest of the world. So, you know, that I'm not sure that answered your question, but that's, that's my perspective. Uh, that, that was awesome, man. Hey, you know, I, I was thinking too to, of our conversation the other day, Pete, you know, um, where you said, hey, anybody can be an entrepreneur. You know, anybody can be an entrepreneur. It, it, it takes grit, you know. And, um, you know, which leads me into my next question, because you've obviously shown a lot of grit, not just on the business side, but also on the athletic side. What got you into athletics in the first place? Because really, that's what that was the platform that got you into all this inventing stuff, right? Yeah, I mean, I, I was always an active kid. I just remember I remember living in Stanford, uh, uh, Connecticut. You know, I was being I was four or five years old and I just couldn't. My mom thought I was literally possessed. She's like, dude, can you just sit still for a moment? And and so I think, you know, I don't know if it's congenital, but I've always had this just desire to be in motion and, and moving. And that's where I feel like I come alive. Um, but maybe a, a better answer is in high school as my junior uh, high school. And I'll be honest with you, I was a schmuck. I was not a good human being my junior year of high school. Full disclosure, I was hanging around with the wrong dudes, doing the wrong stuff. I, I didn't play one sport. I was a three-sport athlete my sophomore year. My junior didn't play any sports. I smoked more weed than Cheech and Chong. It was a terrible year. And that's funny, but it's not. I mean, I was not a productive individual. And at the end of the year, I'll never forget, I'm walking by uh, to, to get my, my, my books and, and kind of close out my locker and to, to get to my locker, the weight room was right there. And I look inside and there's dudes training in there. I'm like, it's the last day of school. Shouldn't they be partying and like, woo. And it said, there was a sign on the wall. It said, Hey, summer training for football for, you know, senior football starts now. And now was like big, bold, you know, like Sharpie. And so I kind of like, Oh, I think I know that dude. I look in and I see Chuck Pollard dude's ripped, got his shirt off a little cheesy, but Hey, whatever. And then I see, I see muscleman in there. I'm like, these guys are jacked. And, and, and I, like my heart wanted to go in, but then I was intimidated, right? These guys, I, I I'm not a strength guy. I've never trained. I was athletic, but i never did strength and conditioning. And so I start to back away kind of with my tail between my legs and the door abruptly opens. And this dude in a booming voice, like, Hey, are you going to just stand around looking in? Or are you going to come in and train? And I was like, oh, okay. And I just walked in the door and that was it. I don't know this dude's name. He was, a. by the way, that's kind of funny. Cause so I said, coach, I don't know what to do. I, I, I never trained before. And he says, I'll oh, just train with me. So this guy that day was doing dips and calf raises. So for 45 minutes, we went back and forth and did dips and calf. By the way, I could only do three or four dips. So it'd be like three or four calf raises, 20, three or four dips. After 45 minutes, uh, he said, all right, I'm out of here. You're done. Come back tomorrow. Okay, okay. I couldn't walk you guys for two weeks. My cat, if you've never done calf raises and then do, you know, 18 sets, I, I was destroyed. I look like, a, you know, one of those kangaroos or something trying to walk. Um, but, but that guy literally fundamentally changed my life because he gave me the gift 
of fitness. He opened the door literally and figuratively and gave me the gift. And that's what you guys do. And that's what all your listeners are doing every day. You're opening that door. You're giving somebody an opportunity. It's up to them to seize it and take it and step in. But you're opening that door. And don't ever underestimate the impact that you can have fundamentally on changing somebody's life. Uh, and it happened to me. That's how, that's how I got into fitness. Oh my God. That freaking motivated me, man. You, you happen to remember that guy's name? No, I, I, I'm telling you, I don't even know who it was. And that's my point is it doesn't matter who it was. It matters what the, the act was and what he did. And I don't care if people don't remember my name, but if I can, can give them the energy and the strength and the passion, the desire and the energy to go out and move a little bit and get off the couch and, and, and try to actualize their human potential, then I've done my job. Thanks for listening to this episode of the DECA series on Spartan Up Podcast. Spartan Up is your partner in resilience for mind, body, and spirit. We're here three days every week. Tuesdays, you can find Joe DeSena, founder and CEO of Spartan, interviewing biohackers, business leaders, authors, and athletes. Thursdays and Saturdays, catch episodes from our DECA, Endurance, Trail, Combat, and LaRuta series. Do you know someone who needs a little nudge? Maybe they could use some motivation, tactics to be stronger, healthier, happier, more successful. Tell them about our show. And if you're watching on YouTube, leave us a comment. We want to know who's watching and who's listening. Thanks. See you next time. This episode of Spartan Up is brought to you by Gone Rogue High Protein Chips. Visit Amazon or GoneRogueSnacks.com and use the promo code SPARTAN25 to get 25% off.